Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video and yet another episode of my F1 2018 career mode. Today we are here for round 2 of season 2 for the Bahrain Grand Prix and for this episode we do have an upgrade on the car and in this case it's going to be the fuel um, consumption upgrade which is basically going to be a bit more of an efficient car for us when it comes to fuel consumption pretty much and it is a major upgrade so hopefully that will help us out in the long run this weekend but uh, more importantly I want to focus on um, this particular track, it's a real challenge, I can't lie to you guys, but if you guys did miss the first race at Australia, an absolutely incredible opener, then do check it out by clicking the card in the top right hand corner of your screen. Now currently, as you can see on the screen, I'm kind of just showing you my practice runs and um, we struggled here, I can't lie, it was a bad one for me. Um, really, really struggled big time and uh, it seems like with the improved car, the improved delta times that were proposed to me around this circuit um i just could not i could not even touch them it was ridiculous i was a second and a half off the pace every single lap every single program and it was a really bad session for me and ultimately gave me a little confidence going forward you know um the car felt good however i was really doubting myself now um i did actually do a setup for this race um i tried a million different things i finally came to grips with a setup that I was happy with. I'll show you the setup once we load up into the race um, so you guys can see it for yourselves. But for qualifying, we're going to see what we can do. Um, I found the setup very last minute and whilst well, I found it, I mean, I, I made it and it was what I was most happy with when it came to the balance. So um, I gave it a go in qualifying and to be fair, it's the one that I had most confidence with. So I thought to myself, you know what, if there's going to be any chance of me getting to Q2 or trying to have a good qualifying, it was going to be with this setup. And straight away, in our first run, we go P15, not too bad. However, we would then later drop down to P19 as we go on to our second run. Just 30 seconds left in the session. And the pressure was on here, obviously, we want to try and do well. So last run in Q1, uh, straight on the super softs, lowest fuel, maximum engine modes, and we're going absolutely flat out here to see what we can do in this session already though we are up on the delta and to be fair i knew that i left some time on the table on the first attempt um unfortunately there turn four getting wide missing the apex slightly which was not ideal as we now go through five six and seven this entire um sort of start the middle set of the combination the best corners on the track in my opinion um the car was working really well through that it was absolutely sublime through that section as we now make our way down into turn nine which feeds into the ever so complicated turn 10 hairpin little, little tweak of the brake bias on the entry just to make sure we don't lock up and then back to normal on the power nice and early but we are still down in the delta um, unfortunately really throwing away the early advantage that we had otherwise you know it could definitely be a tenth and a half or so out by now uh, maybe even two tenths if i've really got it together perfectly um, however though we do gain a bit of time for that left hand a really nice run through there flat out over the crest avoid the curb on the inside otherwise you will go for a spin now feeding the car second from last corner nice and easy on the apex there try and use the curb on the exit on the power nice and early and pretty much just running as much speed as you can down into the final corner spot the brake point as the curb starts on the left hand side fourth gear pick up your apex attack the corner make sure you don't run too wide and then open up the drs and it's a run to the line to see where we go we are up on the delta do we improve the q2 is it going to be enough for our second q2 of the season and it's going to be p17 so unfortunately not enough and um to be fair ultimately i was nowhere near q2 um it seemed close on paper but, you know time wise i wasn't really close and um it was disappointing really but we couldn't do much Grosjean was even four tenths ahead of us so ultimately p17 the best we can do so hopefully we can turn it around tomorrow in the race for the Bahrain grand prix there's something in the bahrain air tonight and i'm not just talking about the sand our brightest minds have thrust their brightest ideas into the spotlight of the sakia circuit this evening as we look ahead once more to a grand prix that has thrilled us so consistently in the past Formula One returns to the desert today on this exceptional 3.36 mile circuit. 15 corners provide plenty of overtaking opportunities and two DRS zones will help with that as well. It could be a strategic race this one with Sakir notorious for eating up the rear tyres. Watch out for drivers managing their rubber at some point during the Grand Prix. Also here, of course, is Anthony Davidson. Let's talk about Martinez. They're starting towards the back of the field today in a car that is fast, so they'll be disappointed, won't they? They'll have a sinking feeling as they look up from the cockpit and realise they're in a different postcode to the start line for sure. But the one positive they can hold on to is that the car is quick and they can make their way through the field. 
With that then, let's run through the grid order. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Ocon, Kimi Raikkonen and Ricardo, Stroll, Hülkenberg, Sainz and Pierre Gasly. Sirotkin, Hamilton, Fernando Alonso and Magnussen, Grosjean, Martinez, Max Verstappen and Stoffel van Dorn, Leclerc and Marcus Ericsson rounds off the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, here we are then for the Bahrain Grand Prix, P16 on the grid and ultimately not a great qualifying session. I knew I was going to struggle coming into this race and um, yeah, you know, it, it, was, it was to be expected. Last year we qualified P19, this year with P16, a little bit of an improvement. Gasly is uh, pretty much in around the top 10, so we've got work to do. And in terms of the race, Hamilton and Verstappen have penalties, I think. Uh, Hamilton's in front of us. Um, two rows in front and then Verstappen I think is actually behind us um, I'm not sure why they've got a penalty so early I saw some comments in Australia as to why Hulkenberg got a penalty in the first race I'm guessing these guys are just taking a fourth engine early on to avoid taking the pain later on in the season I'm guessing that I mean that makes logical sense to me um, also they, it is realistic that they might have got an actual penalty in qualifying or practice for impeding but um in terms of myself, this race, race strategy-wise, you can see we're going to go for the two-stop, super softs onto two soft compound tyre stints, and then fuel-wise, I'm going to test out the new fuel upgrade for this race, and we're going to go one lap less in terms of the fuel. Um, obviously, in this particular tyre strategy, we're also relying on the new tyre upgrade that we got in the last race in Australia, and avoiding the medium tyres in their entirety. Now, for this race, um, I was quite happy with the, the, the setup I found in qualifying. Now, um, I'll try and explain this in detail. I could not find a setting that worked for me. I probably would have explained it before anyway. Uh, eventually, I settled for this setup. So you guys can copy it if you want. Um, honestly, I've got no idea if it's a decent setup or not. There might be some league races looking at this and saying, what the hell have you just done? Um, I never do setups. You know, at max, the only thing you'll see me change is the weight distribution for the ballast and the aerodynamics. Uh, transmission, this is, the tra transmission is always the same for every single track. And then the brake bias. That's all I'll change. But suspension and suspension geometry and also tyres, I will never really mess around with. Or I won't ever mess around with. So for me, this is uncharted territory. But that's the setup we're running. And hopefully it works. I feel good in qualifying. And I think with a heavy tank and no DRS and you know, a bit more race pace orientated mind, I think this setup could work for us. And uh, hopefully it does. I'm going to go really aggressive at the start with the lower fuel. Hopefully it pays off. But with that being said, it's time for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Right. Here we go then. Let's get ready for the five red lights here at Sakir in the desert. Lights out and away we go. Not the best start. A little bit of wall spin and also a bit of a slow reaction to the five, five lights. Into turn one though. Got to be cautiously optimistic. Here I'm going to get squeezed onto the apex curb a bit. Magnussen and Lonzo having a bit of a tussle there. We have to get out of the throttle. Well done. Let's see, P15 for now, we've gained a position off the start. Oh, risky stuff, but we go for the move on Alonso. I'm going to squeeze him out. I put kind of went silent there because I, I was absolutely afraid for my life. I thought I'd have gone for the wrong move, but we made it work. We're up in the P14. You can see Lewis there battling away, Pierre Gasly, P9. So far, so good. ERS consumption pretty low. To say we're in a hot lap. Locking up into turn 10 here. I'm going to set up the car for a good exit. There we go. Can we get Magnussen here? Not quite. That has still pretty damn good in a straight line. This is all going to be about the switchback lines as we get the power on nice and early there. I can see Lewis going side by side with Sainz having a great little scrap. I think we can, we can you know, make some moves on the straights. Hopefully the Honda VTEC kicks in. Who knows? But uh, for me, this race, the, the task is simple. We need to stay with the pack, basically. Uh, Lewis is a good reference point. If we can try and stick with him, or, you know, Gazi as well, who's just up the road. If we can stay with those sort of guys, then we'll do well this race. If I lose contact with the lead pack and fall into the midfield we'll scrap, it's going to be not good for us. So we need to really concentrate on trying to have a good race and sticking with all the big boys here. So that way you have a better race position at the end. Now, um... Speaking of which, Lewis just got overtaken there by signs or re-overtaken, should I say. Nice little battle kicking off here. You can see the from Gasly behind, there's a bit of a midfield pack and then you've got the leaders. Meanwhile, Alonso goes up the inside here into turn four in the McLaren. Bit of an unexpected one. Trying to return the favour here. 
I'm going to have to go on the outside. He's on the soft compound tyre, so he's not going to have much grip on that. And we've managed to stay in front for now. I need to start trying to be aggressive here. Thing is, I'm not, I've got no idea what my race pace is like. I failed the race strategy test. And um, all I know is from last year, my race pace was pretty average, if not pretty piss poor. So let's see what happens. Good exit, though. Out of the turn 10 hairpin. Going to use some overtake ERS. Up the inside of K-Mag. Nice. Nicely done. Textbook manoeuvre. Up into P13. Up next, Sergei Sorokin. A little bit wide through there. Straighten up the car nice and early. Really depending on this ERS early on here to try and keep up with these guys. To be fair, the consumption's pretty low so far. So um, that's good news for me. I'm definitely looking to upgrade the ERS in the next couple of races to really try and be strong in the ERS department. Right then. Over stretch, lap three, personal ERS best. is now enabled and will be available to use when you are within one second of the car ahead in the DRS zone. Magnussen goes for the outside into turn one. Doesn't quite work out. And we stay ahead for now. Cannot waste time battling too much, otherwise we're going to have a bad race. All right, DRS enabled now. Turn 10 hairpin, just like last time. Battery picking up the traction. Let's increase ERS deployment to up the pace. Picking up the traction, but that Williams is fast in a straight line. Bloody really fast. So we're going to have to... It might have to be a bit of a lunge. Especially while Sorokin has a, a triple sip stream. It's going to be hard to pass that Williams. A bit slow through there. We're going to go up the inside. There we go. Nice. Move. Barge our way through. That's the sort of place we need to make those moves. I'm quite surprised how he turned out of it, to be fair. That surprised me. Hopefully I nab some DRS from Carlos Sainz here. Hamilton Stroll Sainz in a massive battle. And we're going to pick up DRS, which is nice. Overtake, ERS engaged. Personal best. These guys are going to try and go three wide here. Great scrap. Let's see if we can try and get something out of this. Oh, Jesus, man. Hamilton was very slow out the corner there. Completely got me off guard. Oh, it's a risky move. Aggressive move, but we made it. Had to take that. Had to take it while Lewis was vulnerable. The VTEC was kicking in there at the end of that strat. was actually catching him up and overpowering the Mercedes. So we had to make that move. We are now P11 on the cusp of points. But so far, the car's going really well here. I like this. I can definitely notice the fuel difference. The car feels so much more agile and nimble early on. I'm not saving much fuel, though, after four laps, I've got to say. So uh, fuel saving might have to be a factor later on. Either way, out the final corner. This could be a two for one here if we play our cards right. Overtake the RS. Try and box in signs. Box him in. There we go. Three wide. Had the cars in the pit lane already, I think. So we're now up at the P7. Look at that. Fantastically executed. That is a brilliant move. I think Gazi might have come in. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I'll confirm that now. No, what no, he's staying now. Okay. Right then, P7, that is great news. We're now in clean air. If I can try and shake off Stroll and get a gap out to a second, that would be Our great news. The car in front is 3.3 seconds. All right, a few more cars in the pit lane. Gasly is not one of them. Personal best, and we're now up into P4. We also shook off the DRS, so we're now in clean air. Very good first stint so far. I've been very aggressive because I had to make up the positions and make up for lost time, and it's worked out. And I've only got 30% wear on these tyres, so right now we're looking very good here for the race strategy. Let's keep this going. Pierre is in the pits. Yep, there he is. I think we're going to inherit the race lead here for now. We're boxing this lap. Give us the best in lap you can. Right, I think I'm going to stay out for one more lap. I think I've got one more in these tyres, and also I'll benefit later on when it comes to tyre wear. I think it's worth taking the pain now as we inherit the race lead for a single lap. Right, it's been a great first stint. Managed to get an extra lap on the tyres, which is also completely unexpected. And my race pace is far better than I thought. And uh, far better than I feared going to the race weekend. So we've definitely got some momentum behind us. And we can definitely attack this race, I think. The strategy is going to really help us out as Verstappen comes in. He's in behind us, and that's for position, because he's tied behind me. So uh, we're going to try and race people up Verstappen today. I think us not being on the medium is going to help us out. Go, go not now. a great stop, though. 2.4. 
as the Haas comes in just behind Roman Grosjean there. All right, 2.4 stop. Let's see what happens here as we get up to speed. Only one stop to go. One stop left in this strategy. All right, just behind Lance Stroll. We're still ahead of Carlos Sainz. That's not too bad. I can work with that. Stroll was behind me, but he qualified P7 for a reason, so we can just try and follow him and maybe even re-overtake him. That might mean we could definitely be near the points this race. Okay, within Lance Stroll's DRS here. Probably a bit too far back for an overtake attempt. But we're starting to pick up the pace and starting to lap a little bit faster than that Williams car. We're also starting to break away from Sainz. Took a while to get the tyres warmed up and get them in the window, but now we're starting to really find some pace. Really am all over the back of Lance Stroll now. Especially through those S sections. I'm so much quicker through the corners. A bit of a lock up there. Here we go. The RS mode's engaged. Up the inside. On the brakes. Nice and tidy. There we go. Right. P11. On the cusp of points. Stroll start P7. So we're making good progress here. I'm guessing there's still some one stoppers. The head is 6.3 seconds. Some information on Hulkenberg. They seem to have an issue. I was going to say, I'm guessing there's still some one-stoppers and softs in front of us who are yet to stop. Also, as you just heard, Holkenberg a car trouble. He's right in front of me. So we're going to get back into the points here. So I think we're already in a net P10, which is great progress already and a good recovery. So let's get our head down and let's keep chipping away and keep working and uh, see where we finish this race. Here we go then. We're catching up to the struggling Nico Holkenberg. And this is going to be for P10. He must have a missing gear or something into turn 10 got to be careful to not lose that front wing nice clean exit crank up the ERS there we go can we get past him before the brake zone yes we do lovely stuff we can retake the normal racing line back into the points up next is Pierre Gasly and I've got to say I'm lapping at a very strong pace at the moment like very very strong um, I think we're catching Gasly so uh, Let's keep this going. This tyre feels really good now for up the temperature. It feels great. Um, I feel like I can easily, you know, consistently match my laps. So let's keep going. And there's Alonso. He's in the one-stop strategy. So a bit of a contra strategy. The only man that I know is going for the one-stop. Could be some potential three-stoppers as well. So a nice little sort of mix of this track. But right now, we are P9. And Gazi is battling with Hamilton right in front of us, which is going to really help me out. And notice Kevin Magnussen. Wow, for the second race running, he's out. He retired in Australia, and he's out again. Extremely unfortunate for the Dane. Very, very unlucky. No safety car, it seems, from that incident. In the meantime, though, I've got to say, still running very comfortable here. If I can finish P9, I'll take that with both hands. As a points finish around here is brilliant. I am slowly catching Gasly, not as fast as I thought. Um, he's no longer battling with Hamilton, so he's not losing that time. Um, in terms of me personally, fuel-wise, you can see in the bottom right, we're not really saving that much. And when the stint started, I was minus 97. I'm basically really short shifting, and I'm using some, some of the higher gears that I wouldn't normally use just to try and get back okay, on target. The gap behind is 5.1 seconds. And you can see the Renault on the bottom right there. This time it seems like Holgenberg has potentially had enough. That car is done though. That car is toast, I think. So, two retirements in one lap. Now we've got cars in the pit lane. Sebastian Vettel, I think. We're there he is. The pit window. You'll be on the softs. We're going to rejoin just in front of Vettel, but just behind Valtteri Bottas. Some information on Stroll. They have an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. And now Stroll has car problems, man. It's all kicking off here. All right, the good news is, right, I think Gasly, for example, is going to follow this strategy of the leaders who are going on to the mediums. Um, I've still got a lot of tyres left, so I'm going to be on the softs in the final stint. So I'm going to be the one to look out for strategy-wise. So we're in a good okay, position at the moment. The head is 1.7 seconds. We just need to keep our head down and keep chipping away because it's going to come to us later on in the Grand Prix. But it does feel like these tyres are very good. And let me see tyre wear. I mean, it looks okay. It's manageable. I'm considering maybe going super softs in the final stint, but I think that's going to be a bit of a stretch. I need to get to lap 20. Pierre guys in the pit lane. Here comes Sebastian Vettel now. Lewis Hamilton in the pit lane as well. I'm going to try and pick up a toe off of Seb if I can. Uh, we're up in the P7 now. Seems like everyone's going to the medium tyres in this final stint. So I'm going to have that advantage of the soft compound tyre. Or potentially the super soft. 
Let's see how these tires feel. Right, more cars in the pit lane. Kimi Raikkonen. Let's box this lap. And Sergio Perez in the pit lane. Now, do I come in this out for soft? So do I try and go for the supers? I guess we'll find out soon. Fourteen point two seconds. Pierre Gasly is in a bit of a in a bit of a train right now with some cars in the midfield. So it's a bit of a massive scrap kicking off further down the order. There's a, like a 10, 11 car train. So there could be some time loss there. And I'm running at a good pace still here. I'm going to try and save some fuel here. We're coming in this lap, lap 20 for the super softs. Going to run some hot lap ERS and burn the ERS up to try and save that last bit of fuel we need because we're going to lose a hell of a lot in the pit lane. So I'll happily lose all of my ERS to try and get back on target for fuel now. It's critical that we have back on target fuel for the last stint where we're going to really push in these super softs. Right then, we've done the job. Saved quite a bit of fuel. This lap. Gonna leave it right for the last second. Into the pit lane. Get it also down. There we go. Right then, onto the super softs. That was a very good stint on the soft compound tyres. I'm impressed at the tyre wear, I've got to be honest. Um, probably could have gone for the one stopper on the mediums, but you know what, in hindsight, I didn't know that risk. Go, go, go. There we go. Right, we're P10 on fresh supers. Can we rejoin in P10? That's the question. Was Verstappen had some strong pace. I guess we'll find out very shortly. There's Verstappen now. Up to speed. We are going to be behind Max Verstappen. So just out of the points. P11. Quite a long way to go until we catch back up to Pierre Gasly. So Verstappen might be the only one we get past this race. We're and yet again, it's going to be... You'll be on the soft. It's going to be me versus him in the final part of the Grand Prix. So... Let's try and chase after Max. I'm going to leave it in lead mix for now until we get onto the back straight and then I'll put it back up to standard. Well then, a little bit of lead mix, but we now got back on tide pretty much. The car ahead is 2.1 seconds. Now we're going to start really picking up the pace now. We want them points. Right then, we're easily keeping up with the Verstappen here. He is trying to push though, but I'm not concerned. We have pace. Box this lap. Push hard on the in -lap. No, we're not, mate. We're not stopping anymore this race. We are catching Gazi though. Quite quickly, I'm just hoping the tyres hold up for the duration of the stint. If the tyres hold up, then we could actually get past Gasly this race. And we can't forget about the one stopping Fernando Alonso either, who I can see is now starting to fall into a bit of a battle with the guys in front, including Pierre Gasly. Three laps in a row, matching my personal best. Good pace, but I'm starting to think we might need a little bit more just to really close up to Gasly. I definitely can't, don't have enough pace to get past Verstappen, unfortunately. We are dead equal for pace and I'm pretty much near limit I think I'm starting to think it's not going to happen now we need a bit of a miracle here we need Verstappen Gasly to battle a bit my tyres are starting to fade as well so uh, we haven't really got that same sort of grip anymore or race pace I mean I'm losing about half a second lap now to my personal best and that half a second was critical for me making the inroads that I needed Alonso, Gasly and Verstappen are all bunching up here just not quick enough if there was a good battle between the three, then I've definitely got a good chance of catching up. But I don't think it's going to happen now. Not enough laps left. We're going to run out of laps. My rear tyres are absolutely gone. What are they on? 61 on the left rear. Jeez, man. Absolutely cooked up my tyres. We tried. The gamble didn't pay off. Although, I'm happy with my race. Um, one stop could have been possible. Would have been a big stretch, though. But either way, P11, I'll take that. I'm not too disappointed. I would have liked a point. But it is where it is. I can't say that I'm happy with how today went, but I'm sure you gave it your best. Better luck next time. Right, so looking at the final race results, Bottas makes it 2-2 two in two so far this season. Great start for the Mercedes man, beating Sebastian Vettel to the line by half a second. Sergio Perez gets a podium for Full Cindy and Arcon finishes fourth. So the Full Cindy has finished where they started on the second row. Fantastic result for those guys and they are incredibly fast. Uh, I'm guessing it's down to their engine and we'll have to check that out. I'm actually curious to check it out after in the laptop. But then we have Raikkonen and P5 in the second Ferrari ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Then Lewis Hamilton P7 after P12 on the grid. Not too bad. Decent recovery. Alonso P8. One stop strategy. The only man to go for the one stop from what I can see and coming in in the points. We uh, fortunately finished P11 behind Pierre Gasly who finished P9 with Max Verstappen splitting both of the Toro Rossos and Gasly scoring two points. And uh, then Carlos Sainz P12 just behind us. Further down the order though, you can see that Hulkenberg and uh, Magnussen had the poor races. Hulkenberg with the car issues early on and Magnussen 
ultimately retiring. In terms of the driver standings, though, you can see we dropped down to P7, which is to be expected. Um, we're back to where we finished last season. Sergio Perez is second in the championship, and Ocon is all the way up to fifth. So, uh, incredible stuff here, and uh, really, really crazy start of the season so far for the Force Indias. In terms of the constructor standings, though, Force India remain in second place, and we dropped down to fifth. Um, I don't really know what to say. McLaren get a, for a couple of points thanks to Alonso, and they get their off the mark for the season. But Mercedes are the team that lead the way, and they are ahead by 66 points at the moment. But all in all, those are your standings. Now we're going to move into the laptop and purchase upgrades to also see where this Force India pace is coming from. Right, so first of all, on the laptop, as you can see, we are currently losing both rivalries to Perez and Gasly, both these guys. Um, really going well. We beat Gasly last time in Australia. Today, he beat us, so we can definitely win that rivalry. Perez is on fire at the moment. He's really doing well. And uh, two podiums in two races. I might have picked the wrong battle so far on paper. Now, in terms of the R&D, we have 1,832 points to spend, and we are going to go straight to the engine because I don't know what it is, right? We're the third best one in the engine department. Forcing they're actually below us, but it feels like they're better than us. Williams as well, they feel like they're better than us. If I look at other departments, um, we're better at Force India in every single one except for the chassis. So what we're going to do is, I think I'm going to try and invest the points accordingly. We're going to try and work on chassis and error at the same time. So first things first, I'm going to go for powertrain. We're just going to go for pure engine power here. And um, that's going to arrive for the car for backer, which is good timing. And then I'm going to work my way up here towards the ERS because I want to try and improve my ERS system. Um, once that's done, we can then move over to the chassis. I think in the next episode, I'll probably buy this upgrade here for weight reduction to make the car, again, more agile, a little bit lighter, and overall easier to use. And we'll try and merge that with, with the brakes and the tire wear, and hopefully it will all come together nicely for us. But we're making progress. Slow and steady wins the race. Now, in terms of reliability, I think it's fair we get another upgrade here today. So, um, in this case, we're going to go for... I think I want to go for control electronics because that, we've only got two of those all season. And, you know, if, you're, if your control electronics is worn, um, the more worn it is, the more it's going to wear out the other parts of the car. So, I think it's only fair that we get that worked out. And we're now down to seven R&D points. But as you can see on the progress there, we've got that arriving for the next race. For this particular race, no one brought a single upgrade. I'll, we were the only team that brought an upgrade and we put some distance to Force India. However, you saw the Pink Panthers' performance this weekend. They were extremely strong. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do and that fourth place might not be accurate of where we truly are. But anyway, as you can see, there are all the things you need to see and uh, yeah guys you can pause the video if you need to view anything but other than that thank you so much for watching this episode of Crimo guys if you have then please do drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it also do get subscribed for daily from one content turn on notifications to not miss a single video from me and finally check out these two videos on the screen if you have missed them but other than that thank you for watching guys and i'll see you on the next one goodbye